Hey guys, it's Jason with your Hopium Free Crypto channel. Today we are following the journey of altcoins as they potentially begin to bottom out of their BTC patterns. Now, do I think this is the final bottom? Possibly not, but I think we may be seeing the first signs of a slowdown in a bleed of the BTC values of their altcoin pair. All right, so let's first up hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. If you're a returning subscriber, thank you very much. Hit that like button. Make sure you've all hit the bell notification icon so you can continue following the journey of the market on the channel here as we track it throughout the crypto bull market. All right, let's dive in. First up, if you haven't already, drop your details down below for the Investor Accelerator Lite, TIA Lite, name, email address, hit the notify me button. The link to this is down below, first link in the description. Now this is coming out in a week's time and for the first 500 people, you'll get a massive discount that will be ongoing for life, provided you remain a member of TIA Lite. All right, let's dive into the coin market caps. 1.4 billion, so that's our total market cap. Remember our 50% level is around that 1.33, 1.34. We've managed to stick around that level even though we dipped under it very briefly. Bitcoin. 34,700. ETH has had a solid day today, nearly 7% up, 2,100. And some of the other smart contracts have also had a move, including Polkadot. Uh, of course, Uniswap is on ETH, so that's had a reasonable move as well. Bitcoin Cash, no one really talks about because it's not the real Bitcoin. Litecoin, 6%. Solana, another smart contract doing well. Chainlink, nearly 5%. And uh, to wrap it out, we've got Polygon at three, Ether at three, ICP after massive falls is up around 11%. So we're looking at this because we're looking at BTC values. So this is a nice, easy transition for people to understand the value of their cryptocurrency, the altcoin that they might be investing in against uh, their Bitcoin value. So we want to reduce our risk, our exposure to the market. And by doing that, we're looking at Bitcoin buying at this point in the market. Now, if our altcoins are beginning to go up, then we're going to be make uh, we want to be making more Bitcoin value as well because we are exposing ourselves to risk by purchasing these altcoins. Therefore, we want them to outperform Bitcoin. Now, today we have uh, CoinGecko just to show this. So you can see I've got Bitcoin at the top here. Anyone can do this. Just uh, get to the links of CoinGecko and check it out for yourself. Uh, Bitcoin's obviously going to be at zero because one Bitcoin always equals one Bitcoin. ETH is up 5%, BNB, a couple of percent, and then you can just go down this list. And a few of the alts are up today. So I thought it'd be a good idea to update uh, our altcoin positions considering we've been following them on the channel for some time. And so uh, just a few days ago, I looked at one with altcoin surge. They were up when I was filming. They were down when the video was released. People got a little triggered. I'm like, this is the cryptocurrency markets. Things can be out of date within half an hour. So the point being on these videos is that we're watching the market unfold over a short period, medium term and long term. So I talk about those in the, I'll, I'll talk about them in the charts as well. So recently we've been looking at primarily Bitcoin buying and I'm still in that frame of mind, even though I'm looking at altcoins potentially moving up at this point, something that we've covered on these videos, which is why I suggest hitting the bell notification icon so you can stay up to date with them. So even though altcoins might rise, I'm not sure whether this is going to be the rise where we take off to new all-time highs and never see lower levels. I need to see some confirmations first and I'm willing to risk not buying the absolute lows but getting a confirmation level higher up and just losing out on that little bit of a gain that I could have made because I want to see confirmation. I'm still thinking that the alts might fall away after they've had their move and we could last a few days of altcoins going up because we've just been down for so many days straight. Eventually, there has to be some sort of relief rally and this is alts against their BTC pair. Remember that. Now, we have an updated fear and greed plan for some time because we just haven't been at those uh, extreme fear levels. Even though we're at extreme fear today at 25, our plan is for 15 and under. And so today was 25, yesterday 25. We can see through here it was 22, then 20, 27. And so we haven't bought since around the 23rd of June. Current price is about 34,700, which sets us up at break even. The point of this plan is that we have been buying Bitcoin through these periods. So in case the market runs up, we're not left with FOMO of not getting into the markets. And uh, like you can see here, uh, 10 purchases over the last month and a half or month and a week. 
and the average price being about 34700 So not too bad off the low. We go lower, we keep buying, but we have a set plan of when to buy and it just makes us buy when the times are extremely fearful. So I'm glad you guys have been here for some time following this because you know how difficult it can be to buy at the lows. Now onto the charts and our total market cap for all cryptocurrencies, including Bitcoin, sitting just over halfway. This is looking reasonably good. We've just seen a higher low and we are potentially looking to move up to test that 1.4 level again. You can see we had a lot of lows set back in earlier June and it looks like we're coming back up to these levels to try to break through that. And this is kind of the same picture that I'm seeing on Bitcoin as well. What we're seeing here, right there. You can see we've had some lows, it broke down on solid volume and now we have bounced back up, um, forming a higher low and we're just needing to break through these highs. Total two, which is everything except Bitcoin, not as strong. See how it's underneath the 50%, whereas just uh, total is just above the 50%, very minor things here, but being below is uh, a little weaker as well. I do think this will probably come back up and test these levels around 800 billion, currently sitting at around 740, but I wouldn't be surprised if it started to bleed out again if and when Bitcoin takes off. I, I do think it's a when, not an if. Onto Bitcoin, this is the dominance and we're having a little pullback today. We need to get through this top uh, around 48.7. I know a lot of people saying, well, you're saying a lot of maybes, ifs, then the others. We need to do this, that, the other. The point is we are now one, two, three. This, we're into our fourth week. So we've got five and a half days to go to complete this week. So we've done three weeks up, whereas previously we've only done one week up. But the price we still need to get to 100%, which is around 50.5% of Bitcoin dominance. So the time frame is moving in Bitcoin's direction, but the price needs to be met. Still got a few more days left in this week. It is looking slightly weaker on the daily chart, which is the more short-term outlook, whereas weekly is longer term. And we have just broken down a little bit, which is why I'm looking at alts just getting some sort of relief, which is going to push the dominance down. So dominance might come back to... 45 or 44. It's not going to be too bad for us in the short term. This does take some time to play out for Bitcoin to regain its momentum. Looking at ETH, it is steadily gaining. Of course, there's a lot of good news that's come out for ETH. ETH BTC pair had a good push up. So Bitcoin's been reasonably steady between that 30 and $36,000 level. And 36 is a really key point for Bitcoin to break. So we'll have a look at Bitcoin in just a sec, but I want to look at ETH BTC because this is what we have been talking about day after day after day on the channel, waiting for these alts to at least have some sort of bounce back, just something to give it some relief uh, before we start to trickle off again. So the, uh, the idea here is I'm looking at altcoins first signs, you know, they're starting to get some sort of um, rally happening. Just looking at the speed angles, which we checked out yesterday. So it's just a uh, high to low, and you can do this on all the charts. You can see that it's not falling as fast as it used to. Just drag that over, put it to the top. It's just taking longer to fall. And that's a good sign for these altcoins to uh, eventually start to move back up. Overall, I don't see it moving up just yet. But as I've said many times, I do see it as a good sign that we're starting to slow the bleed in the altcoin space. Doesn't mean we can't keep going down, probably just at a slower rate. Same deal for Binance. It's got a heavy resistance here, but at least it's holding up with a small higher bottom. You can see that again on ADA, small higher bottom. It's holding up again. Nice volume came in on this little low. Theta, higher bottom is forming. That's a good sign. But again, it's still being held down by some resistance. Solana, little higher low forming and we've just broken these highs. So Solana's on the stronger side. Matic, it's not as strong. And it's I think this one will probably break down a little further. If we get the push, that's what we're looking for. Remember this, we were looking at the market just continue to bleed out, hopefully break this downtrend to give it some strength back uh, so that it bleeds out slower and then forms the accumulation zone, you know, a Wyckoff accumulation that we're looking for and then begins its leg up again, breaks through some resistance points and begins to stair step its way up. Uh, so we're just prepared for that. We, we can see that coming. And so back to Bitcoin, I want to have a look at these prices in more detail. This 36 level or well, 35,000 on its 50% is holding the market up a lot. But I think the $36,000 level is the price to beat. 
if we can get above that and start to form a little bit of a higher low, I think that is going to give us a lot of strength and we'll start to feel the market sentiment push more bullish. It doesn't mean we're out of the woods yet, but at least this is a good sign to show us that we are in the process of reaccumulation. Hopefully we get some more big breakdowns and then pushes up. Obviously that's to buy some more Bitcoin at cheaper prices. But if we don't get it and we start to see this setup, that is looking more po uh, positive for the next quarter in Bitcoin as well. So as a recap, 36K is the level I'm really looking for Bitcoin to break, hopefully a little bit higher. And of course, the close above those levels and especially above our level here of 36 and a half. So there is a lot in front of it, 35, 36, 36 and a half. But hopefully we can do that on this push. And it looks like we're setting up because we did get this higher low. The market is pushing hard. We've got just a little increase in volume, even though this day was a push down. So a lot of the buying support came back in and we're starting to uh, have another crack at 35 and 36 grand. So that's going to be uh, a good market sentiment push into the bullish space. Let's turn our attention to the news. And of course, if we're in the Wyckoff accumulation stage, we would probably expect the news to be in more of a markdown type territory and uh, sort of negative signs so that they can keep the prices down. So we're looking here as Indians turn their sight to Bitcoin. That sounds kind of positive, but I don't think many people are going to be looking at that as overly positive because India has talked about banning it, then bringing it back and then banning it and then bringing it back. And it's, it's just kind of confusing. So I think that'll probably get left. Jim Cramer now bullish on Bitcoin, holding 30 grand, but bought Ethereum instead. Uh, so we saw Jim Cramer last week just sell, all his, big, sell his Bitcoin at the low and now looking to buy Ethereum. Again, confusion in the market. So China's bringing in their own central bank digital currency, their CBDC. I don't think that's a surprise to anyone really. Like that's just the way the CCP works, the Chinese Communist Party. They'll do what they need to, ban what they want to, and then bring in their own form of currency and force the people to use that. And in terms of them banning Bitcoin, that's now opened us up, decentralized Bitcoin mining a little further. And they don't really care about the environment. It was more to do with bringing in their own CBDC. We've also got uh, Greece's former finance minister, minister saying Bitcoin cannot and should not replace fiat money. If you read the article in a little more detail, he's just saying he likes Bitcoin, but it doesn't seem like it's a money. It, it, it's not a money that can be used in society. It's an asset and it's people where people want to store their money. I think that's probably a good thing to, to look at because that's what we want. You want to be holding something that's valuable and then start to base a system off of something valuable, like the way we worked with fiat currencies. It was first gold was uh, what we valued and money was worked out from gold. It was pieces of paper saying, I owe you this amount of gold. And then that is how we blew up into the system that we have. Although the titles might not be positive, their underlying fundamentals are still there in a positive way for Bitcoin. But I think this is just used as a lot of confusion to the retail and it just keeps the prices down a little longer for I guess we could call it the smart money or the institutions to continue buying Bitcoin. That's how I'm reading the news today. If you guys have other ideas, let me know in the comments down below. I think it's an important way to understand the news in this sense. I know I do uh, criticize looking at the news quite often, but in terms of understanding how it affects the market psychology, extremely important. That's the way I like to use the news more so. Fundamentally, we need to understand what the projects are and how that is going to influence the world and of course our uh, investment plans. So that's a different kettle of fish. But in terms of the news itself, just reading headlines and pieces of the article doesn't really make sense to me when I really want to know what they are trying to do. What kind of emotion are they trying to invoke in the, the populace so that they can get their message out and uh, basically direct to the market the way they want it to go. So I'll probably look at news in, in a little more light like that going forward. It just it, I'm far more interested in it in that way. If you are too, let me know in the comments down below how you would like to read that news, what your thoughts are. Am I completely off? What do you like about it? What don't you? And this is the update for the altcoins beginning the little bit of a move out of their doldrum lows, as we've just seen with uh, uh, Ethereum and, of course, with Cardano just holding its ground. I've seen this across the board with the altcoins. So we'll continue to update this. Make sure you have subscribed already with the bell notification icon so that you understand what's going on throughout the journey and not picking and choosing different bits of news. 
Like the video up if you haven't already. Follow me on Instagram and on Twitter. Daily Q&As on Instagram. So if you have questions about the Investor Accelerator course uh, membership and also the Investor Accelerator Lite, let me know over there. And of course, on Twitter as well. Thanks once again, guys. Aussies, tax time is coming up. SMSF, check out New Brighton Capital. Link to that is down below. If you want to get your superannuation into cryptocurrency, do that. It's coming up very, very soon. I'll catch you guys at the next video. Until then, have more fun to get more done. <laughs>